A disastrous discovery, black mess of the dusty variety all over the place, and Alan receives a visit from a special guest. We've not glimpsed many times inside the engine bay since the two float tests Alan took on the water last year. I'd more or less satisfied myself that the power plant and fuel system fundamentals were healthy, save for the cooling. But whilst checking one morning on something beneath the cowling slash work surface, I was not presented with the immaculate white paint job Alan was treated to months back. Instead, what looked initially like soot. And it wasn't just in one location. Under the exhaust lagging, around the through holes, and even on top of the engine block. A mystery. I decided that dramatic action was needed for a diagnosis. Off comes the cowling, which is a 15 minute job. It's been a while since I made the cowling, and so those unfamiliar with the early episodes, and therefore with a both moral and legal obligation to go back and watch the full playlist, may be concerned about the right angled edges and corners of the structure. Perhaps something of a leg or rib breaker in rough seas. Fear not though. Alan will, before heading to sea properly, have his cowling adorned with a soft, cushioned acoustic jacket. There's nowhere neat to stow the various components, so I've cluttered up the racking surface top for now. And we awaited our visit. Alan and I are lucky to have a marine engineering consultant. His previous clients have included the following vessels. Alan fits naturally into such a lineup. You'll all agree to that, no doubt, and without caveat. After a bit of a catch up across a whole range of work done previously, diesel filters, ballast bars, corrosion protection, and so on, it was time to work out where on earth the mess had originated. The description I provided over the phone before an investigation meant our suspicion was a crack in the exhaust, soot escaping during November's River Thames voyage, and airflow inside flinging it all around inside the bay. Let's find out. The fine dark dust was collected in particular areas around the exhaust. Wisely, my consultant suggested that we target our investigation, in this case above a large pile of soot, and also the exit point at the stern, nearest the elements. So the answer is, what we need to do is to take that off. Yeah. And unwrap as much of this as we can. Cool. Okay, so you think cut round here? Yeah, sort of cut, 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 cut it out there. The exhaust lagging is the original arrangement that I presume Alan was outfitted with back in 2007, his year of genesis and internal outfitting, thereafter catapulted into all of our lives, challenging and enriching them as he goes. Under the glass fibre cloth wrap, it turns out that there's glass fibre rope. This makes sense and I suppose is typical, able to create more bulk more quickly than wrapping endless circuits of the flat cloth around the pipe. A few more pieces of evidence were also emerging as we snipped and sliced away. Firstly, a slightly damp feel to the fabric, also, patches of rust on the wire twist that secured the lagging. Mystery over. Whilst there may indeed be a crack in the exhaust pipe too somewhere, that's now irrelevant, because the exhaust pipe is rusted to hell and back. Obviously a bog standard mild steel and not stainless, and wrapped for years in absorbent lagging, perhaps we should not be surprised. Humidity could also build up inside the pipe, entering from the stern. The flappy thing on the dry exhaust outlet is not sealed, it's just a flappy thing, and we shouldn't expect too much from flappy things. As if the exhaust hadn't been through enough, we decided to bash it with a hammer to see how deep the corrosion misery had gone. It's not about to disintegrate, but clearly needs to come out. The other end, near the turbo, is rusty too. Perhaps a good opportunity to check that turbo's condition out, especially the gaskets. We began to plan the not particularly invasive, but nonetheless fiddly and expensive surgery that Alan's engine needs. I'm going to opt for a stainless steel exhaust. I'm certainly not going to be getting a ready-made one with a crazy markup from the manufacturer, so I'm hoping to lift this dead one out, de-lag it, buy the various pipes and elbows, and get a weldy person to connect it all together for me, matching all the same lengths and angles. I'm also going to investigate different lagging, perhaps seeing if there are some modern options that don't absorb moisture. Lingering humidity in the engine bay isn't of benefit to anyone. Plus, there's more. We've decided on a location and installation plan for the reflex heater, a few episodes on that later this year. Next, I was wisely stopped from checking the anode, which would have soaked me in engine coolant. I was also planning a huge hull, ballast and keel cooling modification that might now have a more simple solution. 
weeks of work saved. I even interrupted an excellent story about getting a severely wounded ship back home. I connect to the tanker. Yeah. On each occasion we failed. And how long did the tanker take to get to you? Well, the tanker was with us, but we couldn't get the hoses connected. Oh, I see. And Nigel in the end, God only knows how he did it. He, he got the hose. We managed to achieve it. But we were down to literally four hours fuel left. You know, we really were yeah. in trouble. Okay, so we've got a solution for that. Um, I will try the tachometer in at some point. With affirmation that I will do the electric solo and not sully our unashamedly mechanical day with such sorcery and witchcraft. This exhaust replacement is going to take time and budget, so anyone wishing for personal elevation to a position of true prestige should consider doing the membership thing or adorning yourself and all your friends in Allen hats and shirts. This was about to be it, but then something happened. Until last week, I thought I had lost dozens of videos on my little DJI action camera. Something about hitting the record button before the SD card had properly initialized. But it turns out that they were lurking on the hidden internal memory. So let's make up for lost time. A flying visit through past work and activities. Imagine what could have been. These clips could have made each and every video trend and give cause for the fickle YouTube algorithm gods to smile on us once again. Anyhow, thanks dad. And to the rest of you lot, bye.